It is 8 o'clock, so we should start right on time. Absolutely. All right, so welcome to everybody. Um, today we are all assembled here to do a book reading and book sharing of the book, Imasi's book, The Princess and the Political Agent, which is made available to us in translation in English by Tamo Somi, who is here with us today. I'm so excited because this is an event which I have been thinking of finding the voices wherein you know we host uh, about book and have the author with us and we get to interact. And this is one of the first session um, uh, which we are hosting. So very, very excited about that. And I'm very thankful that all of us are here. And we are all from different time zone. We have participants from mm -hmm. Australia, from Canada, from California. I'm in Maryland. And we have uh, from New Delhi. Uh, we have from Bangalore and Manipur, of course. I don't know if I'm missing any other state, but I think we have covered all the time zone and I'm looking forward to everybody sharing. So what we are going to do is um, I want to um, honor Imasi and I wanted to start our program with a clipping uh, from the Instagram account. So let me share that. Questions <laughs> But just to start our program with Imasi's voice is such a blessing and thank you Tamo for you know sharing that clipping to the public um you know it feels like as the Imasi is with us today with her work and then now translated by you with that we want to welcome Tamo Somiroy um who is here with us uh who will be uh ready to answer any question we have as we have read the book. So I see um, many of our other participants and I would definitely encourage everybody to be on video. Uh, we would love to see your face and have a good interaction. And yeah, we want to uh, welcome Tamo uh, to Finding the Voices. Um, everybody knows about uh, Tamo, but a brief introduction. Uh, so Miroy is a film and media curator, cultural conservationist, and a translator of the work. Uh, as you, know, you have seen that, he's also the founder of Imasi, the Maharaj Kumari Binodini Devi Foundation. Uh, and also you might have seen him being a strong promoter of international polo in India, working for the preservation of Manipuri Pony. Um, so with that, I want to welcome Tamo. Um, and let's, uh, you know, since we are all virtual, um, let's give a big hand. I think everybody is uh, muted, but let's give a big hand to Tamo. As to Tamo as to Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, and oh. there is a little monetary um, role which Duda um, can help in giving to Tamo now. All right. Well, Ruda, you have to show your face. I'm online. <laughs> This is the gift from Monica. Yes, so we have been having the project Hagatari and we wanted to visit in person while you are uh, with us today. Oh, cookies, Christmas cookies or a candle? Oh, candle. <laughs> oh, lovely, lovely. Thank you so much, Monica. Thank you so much for finding the voices. I love this. This is a journal. To scribble in? Yes, and that is the product of finding the voices, and that is my artwork on it. And um, really? 
it's a little bit of Washington DC. I have sent it across for you. Finding the voices. Let's see what other goodies there are in this bag. Oh, nice. I know this one. <laughs> These are little uh, Christmas cards or thank you cards and uh, I've often taken these back to New York and given it to my friends. These are Monica's paintings. And what is this? Oh, nice. This is a mouse pad. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Thank you, Monica. Thank you, thank you. I love it. You're very nice. Pad of soap. This is that is a product of Manipur. So for every kudol we sent out, we pick a product of Manipur to promote, and that is made in Manipur. Suit. And what uh, fragrance is this? I want. I'll find. I'll find out very soon. <laughs> Thank you. Very much. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. And, so, and I wanted to also share a last paragraph of uh, Lamabam Kamal poem. Maitegi tampak rahoba leirang tharu sanu samudra wang madasu sadlu sanu bharat ki vishya vidya loida karigi ngam loida ge lai parenga tatrabadi. So this is the last stanza of the poem, Maite Chanu, and the poet was talking about how he thought of and he dreamt of Manipuri lit literature to cross, cross oceans and you know above and beyond Manipur. So when I was reading the translation, and when I read this poem, I thought about wow, you know, Lamabam Kamal's dream and the words what he had written has been fulfilled by the work of Tamo when Tamo had translated Imasi's book and now it is all over the world it has crossed ocean and it has reached internationally so with that I really wanted to thank you for the work the translation work you have been doing in reaching out to everybody in nooks and corners going above and beyond the people of Manipur. Thank you thank you very much. First of all, um, thank you everybody for coming here together across different time zones, from different countries, from Manipur, from the rest of India, different continents. And thank you very much, Monica, for coordinating all this. This is a tremendous thing that you're doing to bring us all together. Um, thanks to the power of Google Connect. Uh, and yes, it is nice that a book uh, by M.K. Binodini Devi, uh, that people used to call him um when she was alive, uh, has brought us all together. And um, so I, uh, you know, there's a curfew here in Manipur, which started at six o'clock. So, um, so I want to thank uh, Ukiyo Bookstore, where I'm sitting right now. Uh, because I wanted the bookstore um, in the background. And Ukiyo has, is a wonderful store on Segar Road on the way to the airport, but actually not that far in, I mean, far out. And it's where the two books that you see behind me are being sold. Um, those are both translations of Binodini that I did. And the, uh, of course, you can see the Princess and the Political Agent, which is a modern classic uh, book published by Penguin Random House India, uh, the publisher. And the other one next to it is called The Maharaja's Household, um, A Daughter's Memories of Her Father. And that was published by Zuban Books in New Delhi. So these are the two books. Uh, one, the original is called Boro Sahib Ombi Sanatombi which I translated as the princess and the political agent. And the other one is called Churachan Maharaj Ki Imam and uh, the Maharaja's household as I rendered it in English. And that is a book of memoir essays. And the last book that my mother wrote um, uh, before she died, and this was published in 2008 in its original Manipuri, and 
It was, um, my mother passed away in 2011. So these two books are now in the curriculum Manipur University's um, Manipur Literature Department in the master's level. And so uh, we're very pleased that it is not only going far and wide, but also into the future, into future generations who are now reading Vinodini. Um, I think I'll leave it there. Uh, again, thanks to Ukiyo Bookstore. Please visit this when you come here. I'm here, I've been here, and it's really a marvelous, beautiful bookstore. You see the Christmas tree behind me that they've put up. So Merry Christmas to all of you uh, from Manipur and Ukiyo. And thanks to Martin, who runs this lovely store. So thank you, Tom Tin, for staying late for this. And to Ruda, uh, who are also joining us today. And so uh, without uh, further ado, as they say, let me stop right there and we can proceed with the program and I'd be happy to take any questions or comments as we go along. Thank you very much for joining us all today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tamo, for that uh, wonderful, uh, lovely notes. And I would definitely echo what Tamo had said about Yukio. Uh, when I saw the bookstore, when I grew up, I didn't have like a cool, fancy place to go in Manipur. And when I saw it, I was like, wow, you know, that is progress, right? So for all of you in Manipur, uh, do look up Yukio, go and get the books. And not only the books, when I see the picture, I see that there is that ambience wherein you can sit, browse, and you know, it's like awesome. For all of you in Manipur, uh, do look up Yukio, go and get the books. And not only the books, when I see the picture, I see that there is that ambience wherein you can sit, browse, and you know, it's like awesome. All right, so to all our um, participants, I know we have a lot of us waiting to share. So what we are going to do is, um, I will call out the name and if you can share a little bit about yourself, what you like about the book and probably share a little bit of reading of the book. And like Tamo said, you know, this is a great opportunity to ask any question. Um, so we would like to start first, um, you know, with uh, whom I love, lovingly call Ima uh, Jamuna Advani from joining us from California. So over to you. Uh, hi, uh, good morning to you. Yeah, and the the book I read is about the uh, uh, Tanatumbi in Manipuri. It was uh, published around 1976, I think. And uh, I borrowed from my cousin Hari Charan. And after a few years, I purchased one and I read second time. I love that book. And then third time when uh, uh, his son, Mr. Choi, contacted me about the book reading uh, publication of this I was so excited. And then I downloaded it in Kindle and then read in English translation. And I, I really enjoyed it as much as the original. 
And from this book, we learn a lot about the, a part of the history of Manipur uh, and the royal conflicts in the royal families and uh, the discrimination between the boys and girls, uh, seeing the uh, some of these, uh, uh, her activities, her preference to the boys. And then, and then uh, the uh, all the social activities of Manipur, and then through the eyes of the Borsayev, you could see the beautiful places of Manipur in the hills when he traveled, and, and those things uh, I have never been in the hills of Manipur, but I uh, imagine how beautiful it was through his eyes. And those things I learned a lot, and then, and then the, all the, uh, uh, the mainly the part of the history of Manipur uh, uh, we learn from this book. And said, <clears throat> lastly, the, the part I really like was uh, when the three princesses went to meet the Borsayev, and then. <clears throat> And this is in chapter 10. And I want to read that uh, part. The Maxwell Pass uh, notice uh, Sanatan B's copy has fair face to frame with her delicate eyes, the fair sharp eyes that look at him. The blue eyes of the dignified type could not meet these eyes for long. And he developed. Is, but when he turned his eyes upon her, he saw once before Sanatomy was still looking at him. The look was not that of a friend. So the the this described so nicely in the in the uh, translation English also. I really uh, part. So this this must uh, uh, I can share today and then um, to Somiroy Monica for this uh, opportunity to share with you. Thank you. Thank you, Ima, for sharing. And I know it's very early for you, 5 a.m., <laughs> almost close to 5.30, but yeah, thank you for joining us. Um, next, I want to uh, call upon my mother. Um, many of you might have seen her in her Facebook Live, uh, Saroj Nalini Kondram, uh, to say a few words. Uh, Aduga Tabiri Bapunamo Koshu Kurunjari Aduna Aina Nachi Gisida Kitang Aigis Hai Tegi, Shared of Janing Basi, Maharas Kumarina Tanamba Quigi Larixing Punama Nasigi Borshebum, Bishanatum Bigi, Sita Nataba Kajitang, Ehana, Tengajaba, Ai Bisingi Samlapa. Warol Chaita Parishana Pumba the Gi and Pajana Lingaga Lebiramba Si A Shirto Jage Ahanba Maktada M K Binodini Krista Gi Jahiri Chinga Magatama Pan Puni Toida Sana Konung the Poi Nungakraba Maharatura Tan Singagi Maza Ibe Mani Bishabharati graduate ni Manipuri Shaitya Da Wari Maza Ibi Ama Oina Sakane. Pilam script e but the su maming zadi lila su e is a su e a bigi poem rubber like sing di wari mazada nunga erecta sandra muki the singer magatamapan umpumanga natata a sangba nungabi the singer magatamapan putareta uponiasta bors have won be sanatum be the singer magatamapan mudratareta anubata indrajit Lishinga Matamapan, Marpumapan, Achini, Johal Nehru, Manipuri Dance Academy, 
Rup Raga, Manipur Film Development Corporation, Chingba Samsang, Chingamari Lainere E. Krista Giza He, Lishinga Magasama, Putarukta, A. B. Da Mahaki, Wari Masagi, Lari, Gai Rukta, Chandra Mukhida, Manipur Saike, Parishana, Jamini Sundar, Guha, Memorial Sanagi Medal, Pichi. Krista Giza He, Lishinga Magasama, Hundrama Panda Mahaki, Upanyas, World Saib, Umbi Sanatum Vida. Manipur State Kala Academy, Amasung Bharati, Saika Kala Academy, ki. Mana Piki, Mahagna Kala Sanskriti Amadi Saikagi, Maramda Yari Batugang, Siki the Maka Parat Sarkarna, Padma Sri, Upadi P. Duna Ikai Kumnaki, Ai Vigile Kamna, Yaskulgi Hiruhan Balekai Jamastan, Impaldani, Asumna, Marik Sumna, Kumjanda Natambirami, Masigi Makata, but the Ahagna, Ahaki Uibo, a pum, Karadang, Pongdoxage, Maruina, Egi, Ibumo, Somiroi, Ipoi Mogi, Mapanda, Ahagna, Pongdoxa Ningbadi, Nasagi, Nasigi Langlaba, Akuigi, Parati, the Natana Priti, Bigi Mapam, Mapam, Kuding Makta, Baba, Pangagawa. I could be born shy won't be sanatum be say. Must see the Natana I hang up on Jerry Bassi, I could be a top alone that I give money for India Gima Panda, quite a Gima Ruin and Angna River Hindi, Hindi Londa, Anubachi, Tobiba, Tobagi, Jatar, Jatar, or Regadi, Yamna, Amukahena, I could be Maharas Kumari, Binodini, Mapanda. Angakpa ibungogi abadando ay isana isay bungona ipuay bungona ng bidra kasu ato pa translator singda ay maharas kumari na tambiram liba ng sagi ay namatakta panjakri ba yam na pao na ba lighting hartani nung ay rekta sanramuki asang manong jabi asina singba bor sa ibumi sana tumbi si di ako yi mani oy na adumak na ire Hujung hujung maksud saya hang na pak abah bawa hujat ribu aku tang introduk dari sida angang kaya na manipuda lebih ribu ma pandra lebih ribu angang sing aduga sini nau sing puna mak tabi ning ba aduga selebas ta yau bi yau jana tabi ribu kaya na makui na pak am na korang na makata bi ribu hai besi sam sam na hai ribu dah ima sing tap tap sab sab di kengjat ye ma modern kengo ni wan hujan ni ma tak jamui light tau bi ribu Adubu ayahna ayi problem masalah kerjanya ayi macam si dapur saya umbi senat umbi si light apa aduna ayi na ngasih di kudung sabar lawjar aga ayi buah ibu mana masih pa baca tanah bagi damak ta amat tangan isegi damak ta thapir aga di ayi na lajari ba nasan gi kuarter si dapur thapir aga di ayi ngauka ayi light tanah nongai jaga ni aduga luina luina na atai atai wari masalah di lari sin si su Aku lagi, aina Hindi dah dah hijau benda tu, bawa atau perluan. Aduh kalau ina lu ina na, aku lagi selebas si dah yau nana baju. Aku lagi lady ba, aku lagi Manipuri jati si na, lady ba lady mampun sing si dah selebas dah yau nana bagi tabak jatuh baju. Aha ke apa pam jawab ni? Aduh mampun kuning mangna supan birang kan ni hai na ina asal tau jai masih aji ibu ibu ngogi kotal lady hai na asmai na tham jaga. Ada gigi, hujung hujung, ikhoy na, ikhoy gigi, kenal si dah translate si dah, manipul si dah, ikhoy na literasi si dah, ikhoy gigi background, hujung hujung makti, ikhoy gigi ahi basing si gigi selebas si dah, yam yaure, ahi bagi su yaure, ahi bagi su lon yaure, ikhoy na tamak mama tam dadi, yam pol oi bahaya katra, ikhoy kambat tu bi, ada gigi, kala nata na ada gigi, elektif juga tamak pasi Sanskrit, tadi ayah mana oi ya, aduh na Sanskrit Ki, aku ini saya dia sida, aku dia sange isi abigian sakundala, ada gigi kapal kundala, ada kadambari, devdas, aduga Krishna kan tadi will nasing, bapun nama saya, aku ini maitei, aku ini jati sigi sange lewa kaya nara, saya tau biram benda gigi, aku ini oleh dah hancur dana lewa se, asyukum dana, aku ini asyukum lewa ngasigi, ya mana saya tadi wang lewa sange lebi. Maharaj Kumari bin Yodi ni ibiran ba asyik dah sunat nak atau apa gisu adum loan atau tidak loan atau tidak transfer sunat orang dah adu gigi 
ไอ้คุยคนนึงมาอีโมคักตะตะตะวะยารวยไอ้คุยคนนึงมาอีเท่านี้ให้นะคันละกาทบุไอริบะกิมาพมดาอินะหังกาจะบะนี้มาชีไ
and Spanish, and I do not, then how am I going to tell whether this is a good translation or not? So there's a little, little bit of an article of faith as we move along, and we have to get references in other ways. What kind of translations has this other person done before? What kind of publications has the book company uh, put out before? The Assamese version, for instance, Imai uh, Bema, Jamuna, and Uche, Saroj Malini, you will remember the, um, uh, the uh, writer who was actually a Maitri writer from Assam, Kunja Mohan, Uja Kunja Mohan. Mm -hmm. And so she sent the translator uh, uh, to him and said, have him check it out, because he, she liked Kunja Horn's work very much. And she and he was a peer, so he actually showed the work to Kunja Mohan. Kunja Mohan read the Assamese and told my mother, it's okay, it's good. So um, so the, uh, the Assamese comes, uh, has come out. I've, I've been offered other Indian languages as well, and I certainly wish to do that. Um, and there are uh, uh, translation companies, there are, there are more organizations and institutions and literary um, groups that are interested in translation as a form of itself as well. The study of translation is actually quite common in many um, literature uh, departments around the world. So it's a, and it is a very important way for the uh, literature and the culture of a small place like Manipur, traditionally isolated, still very distant in so many different ways from the Indian national mainstream or the world ma mainstream. It is very important that our worldview um, is out there uh, taking its place upon the bookshelf uh, among other books from other world, uh, other uh, literatures. So I consider, um, we know that now that I've translated uh, three books now, um, her plays, Asanga Manjabi, Crimson Rain Clouds, as well as the two, a Princess and Political Agent and the Maharaja's Household. Um, I consider her, given the quality of writing that and literary worth that I was encountering, something that I really, hadn't realized when I was a young man um, about being a woman writer, I considered this a work of world literature. I mean, there's a lot of world literature out there. And so it is a very big responsibility. And it is something that we are undertaking uh, quite seriously at this point, we're entertaining uh, translations, um, proposals. The, the last thing, and basically the fourth thing about translation, the basic principle of translation, is that what Ichi um, Saroj Nalini was saying, that she grew up with all the translations of uh, Kapal Kundala and from the, from the Bangla and um, Krishna Kantir will and all that. Um, it is very, uh, the, the, the basic foundational concept of translation is that you translate in, you do not translate out. So uh, that is why those translations by people like A. Pum Sundor and uh, and Imai um, Bema uh, Jamuna, Mabung Harichiron's translations, for instance, they knew Bengali so well. They knew Bengali so well that when they translated these works into Manipuri, their books in Manipuri became books that stood on their own as as books of literature. So. Um, the ideal situation would be not what I am doing. The ideal the situation would be someone who is a native Hindi speaker who has, who know, has a working knowledge or a good knowledge of Manipuri to translate it into his own language, into Hindi, rather than having someone over here who has learned Hindi as a, as a second or third language translating it into Hindi. So what I am doing, which is translating um, a, a book in Manipur, written in Manipuri, into English, is actually uh, in contravention of the, it's not a rule per se, but it is really the understanding that translation should be in to your own language and not out into another person, another language. My interest, and I know that the translation work that I did before I left for the United States, because I've been living there for about 35 years now, and I've come back to Manipur, of course, now is now. But um, that gave me a different ear in English as a language after living 
uh, every day of my life. I didn't come back for almost 20 years at all. So uh, living in an English speaking society, uh, speaking the language every day, uh, changed the way I hear and I express in English. And now I find that the earlier work that I did of translation um, to be wanting. It is not quite good enough. I mean, there's nothing wrong in terms of grammar or punctuation or meaning and so on. But it's just that, um, you know, it's like the, every language has a certain melody to it. That's a, it has a certain, it's almost like the key that a piece of music is composed in. And, uh, and if it goes slightly off, then people will say, oh, that was, what was that about? And certainly, I have I check I send my translations to uh, um, two writer friends uh, abroad, and they, they come back and say, "Oh, okay, that sounds like a British English uh, version." Oh, I'm American, so I would say it this way. So people have nuances of how English is spoken in England, and how English is spoken in Ireland, and how English is spoken in America, in Australia and then how English is spoken here in India. So we do have an Indian English, which is an, an English written in, uh, uh, in an Indian language, uh, uh, Indian literature written in English over here, but there are slight variations uh, in the way a language functions. And, um, but it is important for a language like Maite Lohan to be out there because every language represents a very unique and special world view. And this is where translation also um, comes up another, uh, with another, up to another challenge. And that is there are certain concepts in Manipur, in Maitailong, in Manipuri, that cannot really be translated very well into another language. Okay, maybe someone who knows Japanese and Manipuri very well, oh yeah, we have that concept in Japan as well. But there are certain words and certain expressions um, that are very difficult to translate. They're virtually untranslatable into English. And that means that Manipuris and Maitelo represents a very specific worldview. And that is why languages like Maitelo and small, even languages smaller than Maitelo cannot die because it's as if you go, as if in the house of literature, each of them represents a window or a door. And out of every window, out of every different window, you're going to be seeing a different view of the world. Manipuri literature, Manipuri language represents the Manipuri way of looking at life and the world. And that is never quite the same with another worldview from another culture and from another language. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Tamo, for sharing. Um, I want to add one thing, no? When I mention, uh, um, Imai Bhima Jamuna's uh, cousin that she mentioned, Haricharan, was a very, very wonderful uh, and dear friend of uh, my mother. They loved talking, exchanging ideas. They came up with new versions of how to call, come up with new names of flowers in Maitailon, for instance. Um, he was a very erudite and urbane and very cultivated person. And he lived not too far from, uh, uh, from my mother's house. And um, he was a very special person who uh, was instrumental, was a very key figure, uh, like Binodini and their colleagues, in the creation of uh, Indian modernism. And his criticism, his translations uh, from, from the Bangla, for instance, and the way he looked at Manipuri values, what it means to be Maitai, what it means, to, what beauty means in Maitai culture, for instance. These are things that my mother appreciated so much. He was such an original creative thing. So I miss Kabul very much in my Thank you. Um, thank you, Tamo, for yeah, so the idea is, right, like when our story would be in the syllabus or studied by young people or read by other people of other community, we have grown up reading, you know, work of other cultures. So that is like awesome to hear that it's already there in Assamese and then plans are there you know, to translate in other European uh, language and maybe more in future. So on a time check, you know, like it is 8.43 and I want to give an opportunity to all our participants. So um, let's uh, 
let's plan our time. Um, I know that uh, Megan is uh, has got class today. Um, so Megan, I'll let you talk after Pramut, so be prepared. And next I call upon Pramut Hamom from Canada. Uh, thank you all. Kulamjali, Ima Amashung, Maya Amashung, Akoi, Jen, Jeno Mayambu, especially to Samo. So it's really pleasure for me uh, being a Manipuri and a Canadian. <laughs> so uh, I actually I'm from Bangladesh. I born in Silet, and then I grown up in uh, Dhaka. So quite uh, Bengali literature oriented my orientation. And uh, when I read Binodini in Manipuri, not in Bangladesh, not in English. So in Manipuri. But unfortunately, we didn't get any academic or curriculum, you know, uh, to the Bangladesh with uh, Manipuri. So it's quite challenging for me. But I like it. So that's the other part. Uh, now I'm residing in Montreal. And I love uh, Manipuri language, not only language, but also literature. That's why I learn, I write, I try to translate from English to Manipuri or Bengali to Manipuri and also myself, my own uh, thought. So that's the little intro about myself and about the literature. Go with the, the book. Uh, yeah, so I get easily from the Amazon. So I'm kind of uh, lucky in that way. And as well as Manipuri workshop only, uh, when I was in Bangladesh, and when I in Montreal, not in the uh, the hard copy, but in the soft copy. So I have a good news. I don't know. Uh, Samo maybe discuss with the Bengali uh, translator who is residing in Calcutta. Uh, his wife is Manipuri, and he's Bengali. They informed me that they are translating the uh, in Bengali. I'm not sure uh, is it uh, with your concern or not, but it's just uh, mentioned. But uh, yeah, they did a lot. They did a lot of uh, Manipuri about the Sultan and others, the poetry and the, yeah, the the books uh, from Manipuri to Bangla, Bangla to Manipuri, those kind of things. So I think uh, it's a great news if it's happened. Anyway, uh, so I just read a few words from uh, Manipuri, and I read the, just a few words from uh, uh, English. From the tree. Quagjatrayogadabamarimani In English, chapter three. It was only four or five days until the processions of the crow run around playing and hardly spent any time in the colony of their father, the crown prince. The two children wandered around the colonies of the court that were the dying plots the swallow's nest and was preparing to go together at the residence grand queen mother. So that's the little bit, but uh, I have a question to Tamo. We know the translation is a really, really hard work, and Tamo already introduced about the background. So my question, very specifically, very specific, uh, with only few words, what I know is very difficult to understand from other culture or other language, because you know, culture represent, uh, the language represent also the culture, or every term, or every uh, word. So like Kwagyatra, or like Kondumba Moirangsa, or Luangje Pai Ribachera, those kind of words or terms, how do you define or how uh, introduce to the, the world or the English speakers or the other speakers? Just uh, give me some kind of uh, uh, hints that we can learn from you too. Not only, for, oh. uh, you know, thank you. Yeah, that's all for me. That's a really interesting question, Pramod. Thank you very much. Uh, do ask your friends who want to translate to get in touch with me so we, are, we can arrange for the rights and so on. I'd be happy to connect with them. Um, I can send you my email or Monica can. Um, 
Luangta, Kuak Jatra. One of the things that I had to navigate is I had to keep the Manipuri flavor, uh, knowing fully well that it's going to seem very foreign and exotic. Uh, I wanted to preserve some of the exotic quality. I do not want to iron out all the cultural differences and make it seem very, uh, you know, bland and, you know, just uh, uh, words. I had to keep Binodini's own style in mind, her conversational, very intimate, chatty style. And thirdly, I also did not want to make it so exotic that people would tumble and would be, uh, and, and would, uh, uh, it, and in a way that it would get in the in the process of the pleasure of reading. Uh, we enjoy reading. That's why we read it. Uh, someone reading Guru Sahib Sanatambi, um, in my mind, is someone who's, en- who's reading to enjoy. Uh, secondarily only would that person be looking at it for hints and clues and understandings of Manipuri culture and language. That is in the background. But the first, for the general reader, um, the pleasure of reading Binodini, of getting to know her language, and through her, through Manipuri, means that A, I have to make it very readable so that it just kind of flows and just goes on. You can just keep turning the page before you go to bed. And on the other hand, it has to it has to be a little strange. It has to be a little different because Manipur is a little strange. Manipur is, Manipur is a little different. So the difference uh, has to be, uh, is, is one of the things that my translation, that I've tried to do with my translation, is sometimes I translate, sometimes I don't. But it's, it's been, a, it's really been a matter of my, my choice, uh, my judgment to say that, okay, I can translate Procession of the Crow and then explain further down what the crow means in in in, uh, in, in, in Manipuri ritual, I believe. Um, on the other hand, uh, I don't want to translate a few things, and I just leave it. Some names are translated, like Landriva, for instance, as not guilty, because it's meant to show that this is a name that is given in jest by Quirin, who actually is shown to have a sense of humor, for instance. Um, and this is not simply with another name. Otherwise, if I just put Landriva, People will think that just another common Manipuri name like Sanatun, well, without the reference to his thieving, deceitful nature, you know. So, uh, so one one translates things sometimes, and one doesn't sometimes. And I've just made a certain choice in judgment as well. Thank you. Thank you, Tama. Thank you, thank you, Pramod, for uh, your participation. Um, next, let me call upon one of our young reader. Megan, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Um, go ahead. Okay. Um, I had a question about uh, this part in the paragraph. Can I read it? Yes, please go ahead. Um, look how sad, you know, I will be writing the elephant tomorrow. Sana Toynbee asked him in surprise, why you? I'm saying that I am going to be riding the elephant with this Zoravian grandfather tomorrow. You're going to be in the crow tomorrow? Yes, I'm going to be riding in the swallow's nest with this Zoravian grandfather, as if they'll let you. Yes, they will. Zoravian grandfather told me to ride. Father has also said I could. Grand Queen Mother has also agreed. Everyone has agreed. As if I believe you. Are you the king of what? Even so, I'm allowed. You are not. You are a girl. Um, my question is, do you think that in one of the times have changed, that girls, that when he said that, that she can't ride it because it was a girl, do you think the times have changed and if girls want to do it, then girls can do it as well? Or no. I have a question for you, Megan. Thank you. Do you have any brother? Yes, I do. You do? And and is he older or younger? He's older than me. Is he older? Does he bully you? No, not really. No. Okay. <laughs> so uh, it's about sibling, uh, uh, you know, um, relationships. My mother said, you know, even though many of us we belong to the same father, but different uh, mothers. We all considered each, each of us to be fully brothers and sisters. There was no such concept of being a half brother or step brother when they were growing up. 
And that was one thing. And the second thing is that one of the joys of translating uh, Binodini is I'm translating my mother's memories, beautiful memories. So I can hear her voice. I can hear the way she talks. I can almost literally hear her voice sometimes when I talk, uh, when I read and translate. <clears throat> and this particular one is actually based on her older sister, Anusana, who was a tomboy and played tennis and was a sharpshooter. And she, played, she was one of the few women who actually played polo, for instance. A great horse rider as well. My mother was too. And she used to go with her father. It, she was her father's favorite child. And sometimes when they said, oh, you can't take her because she's a girl, my grandfather used to say, no, dress her up as a boy. So this is a thing that actually happened. And so we know the family history. So getting a reference to family history as we do this is, uh, as I do the translation, has been especially delightful for me to know that where, where she's getting the source from, that she's stitched into this pastiche of this novel. As to uh, whether things have changed uh, for women in Manipur, I'm probably not the best person to answer this. Maybe I should defer to someone that Monica can, can uh, um, pick out a volunteer and say, you say this. And you can, Monica, uh, tell us what, whether you think um, this Megan's question is very good. Have things changed in Manipur for the girl? I, I would say yes, things have changed. Um, but yeah, to all our participants, you know, type it up what your comment is, and we would love to hear what your thought is. But from my perspective, I think things have changed. Uh, my father and my mother have brought all. We are four siblings have given us you know, equality in terms of education and any choices. So I would say yes, you know, if I was in that time, uh, you want to ride a horse or an elephant or whatever you want to do, whether you are a boy or a girl, I think we can do it now. <laughs> yeah, lovely question. Thank you, Megan. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So next, next, I want to call upon Gayatri from Australia, and I know it is past uh, midnight. Uh, thank you so much for staying back to be a part of our session today. Uh, thank you so much, Say, for this opportunity to be a part of this event. Uh, first of all, Kurunzari to Ima Zamuna, Ima Saroz Nalini, and Tamo Somi, and a big hi to everyone. Uh, Bor Saheb Ongbi Sanatombi has been a this book was very special to me. Uh, I ha I have read this book a uh, long time back when I was I when I passed out uh, my 12th standard. So that time I was very much like I was very excited. I heard about this book from my uh, cousins and my uh, aunts, and then I I wanted to read it a lot. And once when I got the book from my aunt, I finished it off in two days, and it was so engrossing that. I was literally living in the book. I was not. I was not outside. I was for those two days, and even after the that two days, maybe around for one week or so, I was in the life of Sanatombi and Maxwell and everything that was happening. Like it has, like it allowed me to live as a part in their lives, not just knowing about the history or the background of what was happening during that era. So I learned a lot about the history and the background but apart from that what i felt and what i took away was that i was living in the book along with them so thank you so much like uh, for the book and for the english one i have not yet read the complete book but i i started uh, from an e-copy so i will be reading a portion from that uh, this is uh, from page number 12 uh, Zasumati was a gentle woman. No one in the palace talked about her much. She may have had her disappointments and sorrows, but she expressed them to no one. Most people in the palace did not even know of her existence. Her senior sister wife, Premamai, lady of Nangbam, dominated all. Even though Premamai was not the first wife of Surchandra, she overshadowed all, and so it must be. It was only to be expected that the clever rises above the many. It might be said that Zasumati merely gave birth to her daughter, for Sanatombi spent most of her time with her co-mother, the Lady of Nangbam, and the Grand Queen Mother. Uh, what I wanted to just 
focus on this part is that even though Sanatomi's mother was also the wife of the king, because of her being only a mother of a girl child, so she was she herself was like underestimating herself. Like it's not like other people are treating her differently, but she herself was treating herself differently. So like I could feel like the way she has like uh, Imasi has written like. In Manipuri, also like you feel you you could feel like what is the what is the expression, what is the thought behind the character in the book. So um, this is all from my end, and thank you so much for this translation. Thank you, Gayatri. So next, I'm calling upon Trasila. Hello, everyone. I'm Trasila Mainam. I'm joining from Imphal, Manipur. Uh, I've completed four chapters of the book, The Princess and the Political Ascent. And uh, from those uh, chapters and from the uh, introduction and forward part, uh, I, I already feel the book is amazing. Uh, as I read the book, I can construct the scenes like, you know, like a movie. And I would love to see it in movie too. And I love how creative and brave uh, Binodini is that um, even if uh, she didn't have the chance to meet her royal aunt, uh, she placed the stories of that time accordingly and uh, making us feel uh, the readers, the people of Manipur proud. Um, and uh, there are some lines that I would like to read out. Uh, this was uh, said to the Prince Lukoi by Sana Tombi, uh, which is uh, her half-brother, and that is, of course, I beat him up. Can he do as he pleases just because he is a male offspring? I will beat him. I will keep beating on him. So <laughs> this was my favorite. Uh, and I feel that it's kind of funny and uh, I could also see the courage and the determination uh, the, the, you know, the princess uh, is. And uh, there's one question that I would like to ask Damo um, Somiroy. Uh, the question is, how do you feel uh, being a son to Binodini? Yeah, that's my question. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I want to go back to uh, what uh, Gayatri also said, and uh, what Priscilla, you also said about this capturing uh, world of a particular time and getting you immersed in it. Um, you know, one of the things I noticed when I was translating this book is that um, uh, Binodini was, and she only used the word name Binodini when she published a uh, single name, uh, Binodini. Uh, made it a point, she knew very well when she was writing this in the 1970s that a lot of this had vanished. And there's a, this almost a, is a palpable uh, sense of her wanting to make sure that we remember. Uh, for instance, if you, have, if you have read or are coming to down the line, um, the, uh, the question of Sanatomi's marriage comes up. There's a list of jewelry, different designs of jewelry many of which are not around here today. She wanted all of us to remember that we have a certain kind of design history, for instance. So uh, the listing of flowers, the listing of the gold, the listing of titles, I mean, these are all very important to, not only to create the, um, the era uh, that Sanatha we lived in, which is so alien, even to my mother, it had become very, very strange. And my mother's, uh, uh, period when she grew up is also very strange. So to segue into uh, what Rasila was asking, that is one of those things. I remember uh, to share something quite personal. Um, when she was dying and she was lying in bed, uh, you know, she was going to die in a year's time and so on. I looked at her one time when she had grown thin. You know, she was wasting away a little bit because she had kidney disease. And her face had become so pale and so refined, I felt I was looking at someone who was thousands of years old. There's a thousands of years history behind this woman. And I felt like I'll never be able 
be able to understand what kind of a world she actually grew up in. That, I mean, she never went shopping. Shops came to her, the palace. All the panics, all the peas, whatever you want, you choose, you know. So, um, and so my mother, once uh, the, uh, after Indian independence and the uh, 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 removal of the privy purse and so on. You know, she never, after her father died, she never really went back to the palace. It's it hurt her to see the state things were. There's a chapter in the Maharaja's household about cricket, where she's invited to a cricket match in DM College, which her mother, the Dhanamandir, had founded, and saying, and then remembering the cricket that Tirachan did, which all his glory, with his all his grass like carpets. It was famous in the, in the Indian subcontinent, for instance. So we, we lose that. Uh, so I kind of, in a way, feel that she's a person from a very uh, distant and very different environment that I will never be, as a modern Manipuri, be able to know. At the same time, she kind of uh, jumped, and she's one of the few royalty that have made a transition into the contemporary, to, to being a contemporary woman. She was marvelously modern in her thinking, for instance. Um, you know, she was a social activist. She was elected in political office. She, was, she spoke about on women's rights. She spoke about, out about army abuse and all that. And so, so she made the transition between two very, very different worlds. One of really ancient royalty on one hand, and one that of being a contemporary Manipuri. So when she became a contemporary Manipuri, whenever she was invited to do so, people would lay out a pida, which is uh, made of red cloth for royalty. And before sitting, she would gently move it aside and sit on the ground like everyone else. So she had actually given up the trappings of a world that she had lost, the world that Manipur had lost. She didn't try to recreate uh, or uh, hang on to it. It's only through her literature that she wanted to create that. And as far as being a son, I'm so privileged. It's been such an honor and also a great responsibility. And that is why I started the Masi Foundation for the preservation and protection of a legacy. But I call it Masi because everyone called her Masi. You know, I'm sure Uche uh, Saroj Nalini called her Masi, which means royal mother, or respected mother. Uh, and it's because I believe that I was a son only by accident. I didn't choose to be a son. She didn't choose me to be her son either. This happened. So um, I'm privileged, but it's an accident. It's like winning a lottery ticket or something, you know, winning lottery ticket. So, but the real, uh, now that she's actually become a woman that belongs to Manipur, not just our family, she's, she's, she belongs to the land now. Her heritage is part of Manipur's heritage now. I recognize that very seriously. And so I feel that my mother had many sons and daughters, many sons and daughters who came to her and called her Imasi. And I'm sure Imai Rima Jamuna remembers that, and Iche Sarojnadi remembers that. Everyone comes to her as Imasi, but you can't just come to her as Imasi just because you wanted to. You had to have a certain quality about you in order to talk to her. So the ones who, are, who were able to call her Imasi and visit her and talk to her, they always had a certain quality about them. And those, I feel, are her real sons and daughters. So I'm just one of them. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. That's beautiful. Thank you. I'm calling Diana. Diana, you're next. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Diana Aribam. And uh, uh, it is just a privilege for us young person to be able to interact with uh, uh, Sir Tommy Roy. And first of all, I would like to talk about this book. When we know that uh, when we got uh, when I got this book first, when I opened it, I first got the history of Manipur. So as a young Manipuri, I got to I got to learn a lot about Manipuri. Like it's like we as a Manipuri nowadays, as a youth, we are lacking the history, which is a very, very important. So just just opening this book, first of all, we got to know where is where, where is where, which is very, very important as a Manipuri. And the second part is when we wrote it, it was written by um, 
um, uh, Maharajan uh, M.K. Vinodini, it also intrigued us. Because as a young person, we all want to know the household, like a royal household. Mm -hmm. It is not a common household, it is royal household. So it's a princess and prince. I think everyone will be intrigued by the subject. So it was very intriguing for us. And uh, and uh, 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 very fortunately, I have, uh, I have, uh, I have the pleasure and the uh, fortunate. I am very blessed to have met uh, 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 Kakai Bema. I think my grandfather called uh, Kakai Bema. So we also, I, I got to also like uh, and call uh, Kakai Bema. It was very fortunate for me, and for me, uh, uh, the way that it has been written. I would like to say that it is very, 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 very good. Miss, it actually was very enjoyable. Miss, just just reading it was very enjoyable in every phase. And one thing I really like about character, which is Sana Tombi, is that she is someone who is like, uh, I would say, a very strong woman. She was. She was someone who just want to come out from this uh, Pichaki system, which is like uh, the restrictions in life. She don't believe in it. She just want to come out. She was like, no, it's not fair. I, mean, I, I am a girl. I, I, should, I, should, I should be given the equal opportunity as, the, as a guy, which is very, very important. And she was something which we, as a young girl, I, I really connected when she said that, no, I, I am not going to do like a, 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 like a one uh, line, which was like um, when Lukoi and they were uh, talking about this crowd some, some money. So the Lukoi said, I'm going, if, going for a crowd because I'm a guy. So she said, Sanatomi said, no, I'm also going. So she went to her grandmother and said, grandma, grandma, uh, please make me also go to the ceremony. So she her grandma said, OK, so you go. And one thing was she, she was made to uh, transform as a guy. So like, yeah, I think this book is something which was, uh, for me, a really, really pleasure. And at the same time, it gives us an opportunity to know the hierarchy, the system, which is uh, in Manipur society, the history of Manipur society. And um, uh, for me, it is a great uh, privilege and pleasure to have met uh, Sir Swami Roy, it was the first time meeting Sir. Actually, I have I have seen Kaka uh, coming to my place, but I have never had the courage to say hi. <laughs> well, so yeah, Kaka, it was a really, really a pleasure to meet meet you. And I have never uh, you always come to my place, talk with my grandpa Dado, but I never I I got to see you, but I never get to have the courage to say hi because I'm very you young and I. Who's your grandfather? Uh, it is uh, Arivam Shyam Sharma. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Arivam Shyam Sharma is my mother's closest collaborator, a creative collaborator. And he can tell you much more about her and her work and her ideas than I can. Okay? Because they actually work together from theater to music to films. And, you know, so that's why he's also thanking the or original preface. As I Sharma, you know? I mean, the thing is that Dhanamanjuri Maharani had only girls like Jasimat. If any one of those had been a boy, that he would have been the king. And Binudini Wangon Sana, Wangon Minko is the name for Crown Prince, right? She was the first child to be brought to be born to Maharaja Chugachan after his Pamban Pumba, the Manipuri coronation. So whenever the children all lined up, her pida, her seat was always four or five inches ahead of everyone, even though she was much younger, because her status in the royal family was the highest. So she was the first to be born after the coronation. Yet, if she had been a boy, she could very well have been and the king. So there's a lot of parallels between Sanatundi and Binutin and Jasamati and Dhanamanjuri. So if you read the political agent of the Maharaja Thousand together, you will see a lot of the biographical information that she's using. The heart of people that you're nobody because you only have women, or you have only have daughters, for instance. That as a daughter you can't do, you can't do that. And then the other thing is that and this I'm going to make a, a kind of a large uh, claim. 
when I was doing the translation, I Googled a lot to find out if there were writers of royalty. I haven't found any. But give the intimate thing of growing up in a household. Yes, Queen Victoria's diaries are published. It's because she is Victoria. And anything that happens to her is important historically to England and to world politics. Yes. Princes and princesses would have written about the palaces and so on, coffee table books, and so on. But as Jay, um, Saroj Nalini was saying, the first book uh, that he published that won the gold medal from the Manipur uh, Literary Association, Mumbaiko uh, Chandramukhi, until then, all the plays and short stories, until the writing of Anapumbi, all her literary output had been about common people, nothing about royalty. So she had become a leftist when she was a student in college in uh, Shivang. Even today, the leftists in Manipur, the city, I consider her to be one of their own, uh, even though she was never a member. But she was, you know, she was very close to Manipur. She was actually her cousin by marriage. So uh, she is the she's the right. She made her name as a writer first, and then she wrote about her royal life. So. To have a writer, say like Lady Murag Saki, who wrote The Tale of the Genji, the first novel in the world, they say, she was a lady in waiting on the court. But that is one of the few intimate um, uh, perspectives from an insider of a unique existence that only a princess growing up would have. And she's only she's the only writer that I found that actually, is actually doing this. She made her name as a writer, not as a princess. When she wrote Sanatambi, then she was writing about a world that she knew. When she wrote the Maharaja's household, she was writing a world that was new. This is a unique first-hand account. You won't find this in real literature. I think the one, the one that she really liked was uh, Jahanara, the daughter of Shah Jahan. And she wrote a play called Jahanara. <clears throat> and I always wondered why she wrote this play about a Google princess. You read the life of Jahanara, and you read Maharaja's household, you'll see the parallel. Hmm. Jahanara was also a writer. She, she was a scholar, for instance, right? So it's an amazing thing that here, here is a princess who actually was a writer, writer first, and second, only a princess. And that's the way she wanted it. Thank you, Diana. Good to see you. Next time I come, <coughs> I'll come say hello. You have to come and say hello. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Diana, you have such a good opportunity to jump in. Yes, I, I, I'm really, really fortunate. I think Kakai Bema, when I was very, very young, uh, Kakai Bema uh, used to come to my place to meet my grandfather. And you used to have a conversation and all of that. And uh, she once said to come to her place, but I never did, actually. <laughs> 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 Because I was very small, I was very young, and she used to say, uh, you come to my place, and you, I used to say, Pabung. I used to call my grandfather Pabung because my, I imitate it from my father calling Pabung. So I was like, yeah, I should call Pabung. So I call him Pabung. So she used to say, just come to my place, and I, I think my grandfather got busy. That's why she never. So uh, yeah, I think Kakai Verma has been uh, someone i very fortunate and blessed to have met in real person also. And Kaka Somi, I used to see him every, like, most of the time in my place, talking with my grandfather. But I would never get the courage to say <laughs> But next time, sir, I would probably would love to have a conversation. Yeah, and, and I, want yeah. To see the I want to see the picture of both of you next time. Thank you. Uh, next, I'm calling upon Rosarika. And after that, Tomtin, you're on, so be ready. Over to you, Rosarika. Hello, hello, uh, Jamunika. Thank you so much for this platform. This is wonderful. Lifetime experience, to be frank. Uh, and my warm welcome, this one, greetings to all the respected elder members and uh, youth and everyone. Uh, I'm very happy that I got to purchase this book from Amazon. And this is something which I never expected, a Manipuri book and I'm getting through Amazon. In three days time, I got this book. And in the 
Uh, my name is actually Rosorika Angom, and I'm very proud to be Angom because I belong to a royal family, and I keep telling this to my colleagues around. And today, and when I, while I was reading this book, in the chapter the, when they mentioned the Angom clan came asking for the hand for Princess uh, uh, Pandeng uh, Sana, I got a goosebump, goosebump you know, <laughs> reading the very word of the, this one. And now so many questions are, uh, how do I say, a mixed feeling kind of, like uh, Gayatri and Treshla also mentioned, I also could connect. I could feel that my presence in the entire scenario of the story, OK? And another thing is like, uh, the way the the this one the mother queen the the grandmother the uh, this one the lady my Islam, the way she has portrayed herself you know she has a soft corner also and plus at the same time she was showing the toughest of the toughest character that she uh, had to maintain the decorum of being in the royal family and another thing is like when uh, Sanatumbi got married she was very emotional to be frank but she did not show the the emotion to anyone she did not even let sanatombi realize that she was her eyes were wet that that part was very much touchy and i did not realize when my eyes got wet to be frank reading that para and another thing is like yeah. whenever uh, sanatombi wanted something she just go ahead and break all the norms like opening the king's uh, the proper uh, the assets the belongings where she rem removed the ornaments and showed to her and you know proposed for her and then then she allowed uh, her to sit in front on the uh, this one the kwak jatra they uh, permitting her to wear the boy's costume so th th that is something the kind of bonding that the great grandmother grand uh, you know and the granddaughter shared I, I I felt so much uh, uh, in you know in uh, it was really happening in front of my eyes you know and like Trishala also mentioned Pabung um, Somi I would I I really wish to have this book as a movie I'm sure not everybody has the um, how do I say the DNA to read books and uh, the novel especially so people who doesn't have the opportunity if a movie is being casted uh, you know from this book i'm sure it will reach across everyone it will touch everyone also and at the same time we see the how the things are in the royal family and it is very much and the the right word you know the prison it's actually a prison like you say um imasi never knew what shopping is all about everything came on her way to our all the way to our house so somehow it is they are in the prison to be they have the luxuries of the luxuries the, you know but at the same time they they are they didn't have, they never got the chance to enjoy the the true life to be frank they were uh, you know they were bound to go with all the norms and the protocols of the royal family you know that exists and to answer to megan jay i'm running faster but i want to share this part when megan was asking is there a change in the society yes definitely there is a change in the discrimination between the boy and girl but at the same time not being a critic but uh, you know uh, it depends from individual to individual to be frank and like i said uh, l l l my surname is Angom, and I have that blood in me. So I would definitely say that the royal culture today also it still exists. Not I'm not telling that discrimination is completely there, but somehow, say for example, when I was young, I was not allowed to participate in any of the local festivals. Not because they did not love they did not love me or did not, but it was the kind of the culture that shadowed down from ancestors, and you know this is how it is. So thank you so much, Che. This is all about I would like to share. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, Thank it's you. actually interesting. Is uh, Diana still here, Arivam? Um, the um, Angom, the, the tradition in Manipur is that the first wife, the Maharani, has to be Angom. And oh. that's why the uh, Angom people come and say, like, you know, they, uh, they ask for the, you know, they're very entitled. That's why people in, from Angom family are also call Sana. Sana, yeah, Yes, Imasi. yes. So, so um, so that is a very important alliance between the Angom Ningto uh, and the Maitai Ningto. And therefore, in uh, uh, res out of respect for the uh, Angom clan, the, the first queen is always an Angom. The Pandeng Thana that is in the book, whose uh, boyfriend gets mistreated very badly. Mary, Mary from Yai School. 
Yeah, Mary from high school. Pandeng Sana, if you go to Agya Sham Sharma's house, there's a big photograph of Pandeng Sana in her, okay. her, on his porch because Pandeng Sana is actually the woman who brought up Aribam Sham Sharma. Okay. Because, you know, I'm sharing a lot of uh, uh, personal things, but Agya Sham, I call him Agya Sham, his parents died in a pandemic, died in an epidemic. In 1942 during the war he was very his, you know he and his brothers were very young at the time their hingon your homestead diana belonged to pandeng sana the woman whose boyfriend mary was uh, crucified in the marketplace and it is pandeng sana that actually endowed the temple that is even sham sharma's holy temple so our history as my mother says it's not that long ago these are things, things that are still alive today. And yes, movie, yes, I'm working on it. And I will not oh, say anything. That's awesome. <laughs> that's a lot of money, so I have to, I have to go really to the international. It cannot that's be enough. <clears throat> All right, so let's move on. Um, Tompin, you are next. And after Tompin, Rosina, just be prepared. All right, Tompin, All right. Tompin, go ahead. So, uh, so my name is Tomtin Longzam and I'm here joining from Impal 2 and I'll be uh, telling shortly. So the first thing, I have not read the book completely, but I have read some part of it. The, uh, so the first <coughs> thing, is, uh, it, I find it very interesting reading this book as we get to know more, <coughs> go, uh, get to know a lot about things, how, uh, how things were going in Manipur a long time ago. and. Uh, yeah, we get to know a lot about the new new words uh, back there back then, and the um, the most thing I love for this book is as a student is that is the historical timeline <clears throat> timeline event uh, which helped me a lot and which helped me a lot while I am confused about the year that that the historical things happen and. Shortly, uh, I would like to hear from you, sir. That is, is that, is there any difficulty while translating this book? And if there is it, what are they? Well, well, the timeline, the timeline is very important. Is very important. It's not in it's the, not in the book. 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 Okay. Okay. Um, we created it specifically for the Penguin uh, edition for this publication. The same thing with the cast of characters. Um, I remember I was the one discussing with my mom, and we actually drew out a genealogy for the characters because there are about 150 characters in this book. All of them are very important. So when two Manipuris meet, they always find out, you know, we always try to find out how we are connected. And you, every one of us will know someone in our family who knows how to recite the connections between people, who always knows that this person is related to us how. Uh, that kind of oral genealogy, which is reflected in our manuscript genealogies as well, is very important, And but it's getting very confusing for the non manipuri reader. So we had to create the timeline because everyone was, when she mentions Kong Jong, we know that it hasn't, it's happened before. We know that. We know what Kung Jom Lam is. But that means nothing to someone who does not know much about Manipur, which is the general reader. So we have to create the timeline and the cast of characters and to make sure that the, uh, the, the, the literary style of Binodin, which goes back and forth in time, especially the first 10 chapters, is kept uh, clear for the general reader so that uh, we are uh, privileged to read her literary approach because she is a writer, writer. This is a really serious writing job that she has done. And she drew from her experience in reading Russian novels and Bengali literature. And she was very fond of Virginia Woolf. Someone once said to me, oh, there's a lot of typos, there are no commas. And I said, well, that's her, her stream of consciousness technique that she's using. So she's a very literary and very literate writer as well. <clears throat> 
not just Manipuri literature, but a lot of world literature. So keeping all that is one of the biggest challenges, while at the same time, as all of you will know, especially my dear Pajamuna and all that, um, who met her, her conversational style, the way she draws you into conversation, if you meet her, um, she's very intimate and she, She's really, she can deal with, relate to anyone very easily. And that kind of intimacy, that kind of conversational flow and prose, <clears throat> the grace of a prose was, is the biggest thing to capture. And uh, I think that I've, got, uh, you know, I'd like to think that I've kind of grown used to it. And because I've been doing so much and I don't translate anyone else, I only work with her. So I never, uh, so I kind of, try to capture that voice. That voice, that grace, that style is the hardest thing to capture because after all, I'm translating something that is not mine. Huh? I didn't write that book. I'm merely the translator. So my responsibility and my burden is quite immense. Thank you for that, Thank question. You for that question. Thank you. All right, next we have Rosina. And after Rosina, Derika, are you there? I see that you are there, so be ready, you are next. All right, over to you, Rosina. Hi, everyone. This is Rosina uh, from Bangalore. Yeah, so um, uh, thank you so much, uh, sir, that you have written this book, I mean, translated this book, because I have been looking forward for this book. Like, in Manipuri, if you read this book, it's really difficult for me to understand some words are very ancient Manipuri Maitai words you, uh, uh, Ima and Kevin has used that time. But uh, when I saw this in the finding the voices that uh, the princess and the political is and like, I asked a question to Iche Monica that is this the translation of uh, Boro Mishunatombi? And she said yes. And like, yeah, I'm buying it. So I, I my husband was there. Uh, so he just went for a meeting because I have been telling the story to him. Like, this is what happened in Manipur, the princess and the political agent, you know, Brit a Britisher in the Manipur. Do you believe that? And all those things. Actually, he's from Kerala. He, he also wanted to join this um, session, actually, uh, knowing that the Manipuri culture and all, he enjoyed, he enjoyed that. So he gifted me this book. This, um, from Amazon, he bought it, and like I started reading the book, and then first thing, um, what I wanted to share is I read this book in during my graduation time from one of my ma'am. Uh, she was in Mangalore, so the, the Manipuri version one. So I started reading, and I asked her, "Can I read this? Can I take this to hostels?" She said, "No, this is only like very rare and very precious book. I cannot give it to you." So only a few pages I read and then I wanted to continue. I have been looking in the EPAO and so many money for each, uh, this one, um, links and if I can find any uh, you know, proper store on that. But I, I found bits and pieces, but I'm really glad I got this, this book now. I haven't finished yet. Um, I'm in the chapter three now, and I'm really liking the relationship between the between Sanatombi and great grandmother that they are very, very, uh, she is very born to her and then very lovingly. And yeah, I'm really uh, looking forward the love story between Sanatombi and the uh, uh, politicals in Maxwell. Yeah. And, and I don't have particular lines to read out now. I'm sure I'll, I'll find later. Uh, so I'll, I can share you in the, like, you know, the comment or somewhere which I like. And thank you so much. It's, it's my privilege to meet you, sir. Yeah. It's lovely. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. <clears throat> There's a line that my mother wrote in the Maharaja's household. She says, the story of Manipuri women has not been told. The story of Manipuri women is not finished yet. What she's doing um, with Maishna Maharani and with uh, Nangam uh, Nangbi Premui um, and with Sanat Tambi, she's rescuing these women from history. Because our history is usually written by men and <clears throat> they don't get a whole lot of play. But <clears throat> What she's saying is that they were very, very, very important in, in history and in politics. And she actually creates this thing using the memories that um, the stories that her mother told her about Sanat Tumbi and all and that, at that time. So she's rehabilitating also a woman that was considered immoral at the time for falling in love with, uh, with a white man, uh, an unclean man who eats meat. Uh, she was uh, uh, ostracized from Manipuri Maitai society. She was not allowed to enter anyone's home. She had to go, she had to sit outside. They would take a mora and make her sit outside. 
So uh, that uh, this woman, uh, when we were growing up, when very children, we heard of Sanatomi as an immoral woman who left her husband and became the wife of the enemy. Just the enemy who was actually imprisoned her father and blew up Kangla and all that kind of this. So who, what kind of a woman is this? You know, <clears throat> and then the Sanatomi, Mangli, Mangli, that was a, like a nursery rhyme that kids used to, uh, to hear growing up in the 50s and 60s and 70s, and as late as that. So, she, so she's actually rescuing these women, rehabilitating them, and bringing them to the forefront because she felt that women's stories are not told enough. And that is very, very important. The words that you mentioned, uh, Roshina, is very imp uh, also another uh, problem in translation, is that she uses two kinds of Manipuri. One is modern Manipuri, one is Arib alone. And she, she uh, you know, think about this. A writer like Git Chandra or Binodini or Parapam Chawa, all these people never had access to Maitai Mayik documents. They always grew up with Bangla script, which means that it's like saying that, she, uh, that uh, a writer today like Martin Amos cannot read Shakespeare. To, to imagine being cut off from the literary tradition of your own culture because of the script. So my mother had to rely on Pabung Khel Chandra, this wonderful pundit, um, <clears throat> to translate for her and bring her you know, these things. And she got to, and because of her experience in dance academy and so on, she knew all the Maimis, she knew the Pena players, and their language is different. It's not the language that you and I can speak in Manipuri right now. Um, and as you proceed and you go get further in the book, you'll see the quotations from the songs. Those songs, I'll tell you, were the hardest to translate. And I'm telling you, I did not do a good job with this one. And so much better could be done with these songs because it's a Pena language. Sabi Lao Lao Chai, what is Sabi? I had to like ask people and make sure that I was getting the Arib alone because we have Arib alone and modern Manipuri, two languages. And virtually no one knows Arib alone at this point. You know, it's almost like an endangered, in, uh, almost an extinct language that you find in the Maitai manuscripts. So, but through performance, she was using the laundry. She actually made laundry be a Pena player so that she actually, he actually sings Pena songs later. Those words, those are the hardest to translate because these are all different words. They would have Lija, Ising, you know, the two words, Kuro, Mimit. There are always two words for all these Manipuri words as well. But you can't say Koro, oh, the Koro is coming up. You cannot say that. Mimit is coming up, you can say, you know. But why is there a why, why do we say Koro Mimit? Why do we say Lija is saying, oh, can I have a glass of Lija? No one says that, can I have a glass of Lija? Yeah, can I have a glass of Lija? Yes. You know? So who are, where do these languages come from? What are these hidden languages in Manipuri. So Manipuri as a Mithilon is an extremely rich and fascinating language and she used it in the book, including broken Hindi, bits of English, Bengali, Sanskrit slokas. She has like I counted one time seven different languages that she was using in Sanatundi. Translating in English has taken out all the differences from the languages. I had to because I was writing it in English. How do I convey a Manipuri room of guys speaking Hindi, which she does. She meets a woodcutter, and the woodcutter is saying, like, you're know, talking to a side in broken Hindi. She writes broken Hindi. How do I make broken Hindi? So I had to also put an accent and broken grammatical structure to indicate that there is this man is speaking a language that is somewhat off. It's not really well spoken, you know. But those differences, that variation, in the richness and layering of language used in this book are all it's all become flat now because we have to do it in English. But I had to I wanted to keep as much of it as possible. Yes. The good part is in English we have dictionary if there is a difficult word we can uh, look after. But in Manipuri may say that we don't know where to go and find that the meaning of that. You know? I'll, I'll get you a dictionary. I do have it in my bookshelf. There is a very, very nice dictionary I got, this much thick. 
Okay. Um, actually like translates you know my tailor to english and so there are oh, wow. <laughs> well, actually, I mean, I mean, in fact you know thank you for reminding me of something i've been trying to do because i'm now digitizing manipuri for mm -hmm. archival purposes i have an archival project based in texas that i started last year so one of the things that is going to be key is that we have a dictionary of Ariba loan to my there is a dictionary. okay yeah which cool full of words that no one knows anymore yeah <laughs> and it could be available in amazon <laughs> yeah yeah and i don't know it's, it's good for us <laughs> so next is uh rosina has done now is derica after derica is donaby and after donaby ruda um and we'll wrap it up with vinnie okay and let's make it very short and sweet and quick and uh, we'll try to wrap it up good evening okay. everyone I remain there in the I said, Monica, the Guinea. The Monica, the I know request of the Vene, I get the Manipurigi copido in a layer, though, Sigi, Boriding, say, owning buggy, and each other request over the genus here, beer, Pogit, Hagachari. I manipulate some Hazar again. Miss Ratom be like, say, I am manipulating of the Papa, Hanmani, and the Sunday to go. Salanto be high about characters, the fictional characters, Sunata Banina, Pana, Paukiba, Yum the Bamayamdo, Paukumabe, and the Larigasipa, the Tainagi, Manipurgi, Chanaramba, my Dining Togi, Munga Kamina Chanaba, Adagi, Mimiam, Sinamong, Peter Toba, respect my am, the Gi, Manipurgi, Majasin's number to say Manipurna, sorry, Manipur say British Namun Kit, the Kadore, Hypata. Munkibiara, Kogi, Kogi Potni, Haina, Yam Tonapana Munaba, Sisyam Tagat Ningani. The Gap Salanto Mina Nupio is our basso, Tobaya the Bab, my amana Tori Basse, Sanaka Masila Banasuma on the Tona Hape, Haina in a Kanse. Duga, Laric Sidaina, Pamzaba, sentence, Mate Ama, Hizaraki. Maxwell, Sanato Mida Haiki Banimaseko. England the Dinu Pina Nikau Oi, Manipur the Masikin Chatnabi Lerum Labidi, Aina Nangu recommend Tarangani. Duga Matanga in a Hazid or Basina Manipur getting Tau Biramba, Surjan, Surjan, Sanatum Bigi, Babungs in a Habiramba. Nupina Nikau Oi, Bayaram Labidi. Ah, sorry, sorry. Nanga Nupa or Labidi, Ipa Pain Downing. And Aduka Maxwell so Mohammed, the pinning toy bear am love the end and Nangi Honoram with you. Sanato be say the Pio is a basumagi matic magun, may am say, Mina Sukambiba, Adugi, Aduginis, my high basi Haina can say. Side lessons are thank you, Derica Yamasiko, finding the voice key through the uh, Nagala Pibagi. Thank you so much. Next, Donabi. Yeah, uh, to everyone present here. Uh, like, I'm very grateful to uh, Cha Monica for giving me this book. And, like, Cha Monica, am I audible? Yes, you're good. Good, good, good. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, like the time when I received this book, I was uh, very ill and I was bedridden for some days. Uh, and the moment I received this book, like, uh, this book was. This book has healed me totally, I could say. Like, it did not uh, stop me. Uh, this book, like, after after only seeing the front page, this one, uh, I like it so much. Like, uh, uh, my sickness didn't stop me from reading this book. It, it healed me totally. After reading the first chapter, I asked, uh, like, I was so curious. I was so curious to get to know the end. But uh, unfortunately, I have not read till the end because of my some uh, like some personal work yeah so i kept asking my question ma, ma, mama do you know this one sanatombi princess sanatombi you know my mother used to tell me like i know uh, like we have you we used to read a lot uh, and you can ask your grandmother she knows better about them because uh, it were like at their time and so on but, and then i didn't know that the the song that is sung by rossi bina and and that one uh, this uh, i forgot the other uh, it was about this boros i have my mother just told me about that 
like yeah, it, it is a water and all. And then after that, I check out on YouTube and this after uh, this one, and, uh, people get to know about this English version of this book, the, prin uh, the, uh, the Princess and the Political, as in, like I go to see a lot of new comments in the YouTube of the music video, like, oh, Maxwell was such a good gentleman, he was such a gentleman, like, like the total version that they used to think about Sana Tombi and Maxwell was totally cho a chance after reading this book. Like I'm gr very grateful and thankful to uh, Pabung Somi Roy for translating mm, in English and we get to like uh, actually even if uh, I want to read it also. I uh, like I cannot read in the Manipuri version. And then I think many of the youngster, many of the younger generation of Manipur, uh, like got to uh, know about this uh, Princess Sanatombi after this uh, uh, after the English translation. So I'm very grateful to you, Pabung. Uh, like uh, and then uh, coming to the part of the book. Like I feel Sanatombi so dynamic, she's so bold and dynamic. Like she doesn't, uh, she doesn't request her great grandmother. Like please let me, please let me. She doesn't do that. Like I will, I can. She was like that. that I like it. She was so interesting and she is so dynamic. Yeah, that's all. Thank you, thank you yeah. to all. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Sanabi. Okay, so we have two more lightning round. Uh, Ruda, are you there? Yes, hello, hi. Yeah, thank you so much for being there and hosting over there at Video. All right, thank you for having me, everyone. And um, I think the writer has done a very good job with how the story goes about intertwining the different perspectives of the royal family and the politics behind it. And while reading the book, I won't be giving away any spoilers, but I had some questions. Like, if the great queen mother and Prince Kueng did not influence Anatombi on her behavior, as many of you have read, that great queen mother had been an enabler for Anatombi while she was a young child. If she did not have the opportunity to have such a support in her life in her early days would she have turned out as she was in her adult life this is my first question to uncle somi and my next question is from the book actually but i will not be giving away any spoilers okay so in the foreword the writer wrote that um uh, okay wait Please give me a minute to find the line. She said, although this greatly inspired me, I could not take it up. As a writer used to short essays and lyrics, I lacked the courage to take up the story of such a large life. And in the epilogue, she wrote, quote, I was afraid to finish the book. And in between these two lines, there are several pages of the book. There are things happen, but in the perspective of a writer, what would have happened to her in between these lines from before she started the book and to the point when she was about to finish the book, she was so afraid to finish it. Thank you. That is all I have for you. Thank you, Ruda. So, Tamo, you want to hold on to your answer because I want you to yeah. wrap up at the end. Okay, Vinny, you want to share your uh, sharing quickly and then we'll wrap up with Tamo's final uh, answer and thoughts. Okay, sure. Uh, well, uh, this would be the first, uh, actually, a novel from Manipuri literature that I will be reading because this is a translated version. Because uh, since uh, during my childhood, I haven't got a chance to study well about the uh, Bengali script or the Maitelon, so I couldn't read any of the novel, uh, full novel, because I, only a short story or a poem is what I can read because I'm not so fluent. And thank you for that. Um, 
one thing I like about it is that I haven't read it completely, but then the thing which I like is like, you know, the beginning itself is very interesting. And this, this is actually drawing me to read the book now. So I will finish it soon that I know. And thank you, Damo. I have lots of questions, but I, uh, I think I will go ahead and take an opportunity to meet personally with you and ask the questions and clarify more things because uh, most of the questions everyone have asked. So um, I would definitely read this book first and I will connect you, uh, connect back to you and I'll come to your school because my home is just nearby. I'm in Kishamthong. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, and uh, Ukyo is also just behind my house, so yeah. we can catch up, catch up there. So that's all I want to say for today. I, I, thank you, thank you so much, uh, Lenny. Um, uh, please feel free to share my contact information, uh, Monica, with any of the participants yes. here, um, and feel free to call me, email me, drop by, whatever. Uh, I'm locked down. I'm not going anywhere. So I'm here. Um, it's really interesting how the beginning of the novel, uh, she's using foreshadowing, the technique of foreshadowing. So you know that something is happening. You get a hint. What is that? That's the sound of cannons. That's gunfire. Then she begins to get back into her memory. So you know that war is coming, but it, it hasn't come yet. So that kind of play of time is the foreshadowing. And as uh, Ruda was saying, even the beginning and the ending, the epilogue and the introduction, it kind of intrigues you to find out, like, what is this big life that I'm going to under be undertaking? Manipuri book that she's reading because she's not she's more comfortable with reading in English is very well taken. It is also important for our tribal friends in Manipur who do not read Manipuri uh, literature because they have no access to the script. So uh, I was very pleased to get reviews and notices from press in the uh, from the Tanku community and from the Kuki community as well. Um, and Ruda, yes, what is between the foreword and the uh, end note is what uh, is important. So I hope you enjoyed reading the book, all of you, uh, or those of you who have finished it, I hope you enjoyed it. And um, I want to thank uh, Monica and Finding the Voices for giving this opportunity. And also to Martin at uh, Ukiyo uh, Books and to Ruda and Tom Tin for staying late in the curfew times uh, to enable this broadcast from uh, Ukiyo on Segar Road. It's a lovely store. Please visit. Um, and I want to thank all of you um, for joining us today. And Merry Christmas with a lovely tree behind me. And happy holidays. And all the best wishes for the coming new year. Thank you all. We have 13 participants and our next uh, book reading is going to be Oh Lovely Grace and as a thank you from Finding the Voices, all the participants, all of you, 13 participants are going to get a free copy of Oh Lovely Grace uh, by Sarachan Thiam, another translation. Uh, so I look forward to your participation. We'll be in touch on you know how you can get that uh, copy. Um, and this has been really fun, right? Did you enjoy it? I 
I should say, oh I yes. Say, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. just wanted to say, like, it's midnight. I was supposed to go, but I couldn't yeah. leave. I, oh. it's, almost, it's almost two o'clock. I couldn't leave. So I just, that's how the great is the event. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. And Tamo, so I I come, I yeah. you, this has been so good. Lovely. We'll send out this recorded version. And uh, Hi. thank you to everybody thank who you, you know, make thank sure. You you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank bye you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye bye.